hi you guys welcome back to my channel the ninth cup where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose this is going to be the midhaven reading for the sign of aquarius if your midhaven is an aquarius this reading is for you it is a general reading so just take what resonates and leave the rest for those of you who are current subscribers thank you so much for being here welcome back I appreciate you sharing your energy with me through liking, sharing, and commenting on all of the videos. For those of you that are new here, welcome. My name is Karen Michelle Yearwood. I am an intuitive guidance counselor, and I'm just here to share messages from spirit regarding different aspects of your natal chart. And as a reminder, for those of you who don't know, the Midhaven is a part of our natal charts, our astrological birth charts, that indicates where we would do really well in our professional lives where we can be abundant um, it's between the ninth and tenth houses in the natal chart and it's indicated with the letters mc midhaven is also blanketed with the energies of saturn since saturn rules the tenth house so no matter where it's sitting in this case i'm doing the reading for aquarius but saturn really um, is going to be kind of an indicator if you're ever having any changes or challenges regarding your career life really turning to Saturnian energy could be beneficial also check out your Venus placement your Mars placement and whatever's in your second house so Venus is home to the second house it's one of the houses that Venus rules and the second house is all about personal income your possessions your home life um, basically how you create stability and abundance for yourself venus is a planet that rules that it's not just about love it's also about abundance and your money and mars is what keeps us devoted and motivated um, so knowing those placements can just give you more of a um, comprehensive look at what energies could help you be abundant or just get clarity as it relates to your professional and career life Okay, so I'm going to start the reading out for you all with a few oracles from Emily Aaron's Oracle Deck. It's called Angels in Your Biz. And I think these oracles are just really relevant to a Midhaven reading. Um, they're really big cards, so <laughs> give me a minute. I'm going to try and shuffle just to get some overall energies for you, Aquarius. So this is for the Midhaven and Aquarius. I am an Aquarius sun sign, and my sun sits right in the 11th house. So not too far from the Midhaven. All right. First card is responsibility. I am not a victim. Perfect. It's an 11. And we have leap of faith. Feed your fear with faith. Or feed your fear or your faith. Yeah. So kind of giving you a choice there. Yeah. You can choose to feed your fear or your faith. I said feed your fear or your faith, but it could be. Yeah. It could be, you know, giving your fear an ounce of faith to really like, you know, transmute that energy. And branding, you're a unique snowflake. Yep, Aquarius energy is very unique. It's all about being um, a bit of a black sheet, doing things the unconventional way. Aquarius rules the 11th house, the house of partnerships, friendships, um, collective efforts, humanitarianism, philanthropic efforts, um, and, and technology. You know, it's the future. It's a very progressive energy. So with these energies, um, very interesting, responsibility, leap of faith, and branding. Um, with this responsibility card, I am not a victim. I'm actually getting more energy about like being comfortable, like making decisions on your own. And I know that's not typically something Aquarius has, a, has trouble doing, but I think that in terms of doing something new or out of the box or just, you know, like really stepping into that unique, you know, branding of yours, being a unique snowflake. I think that Source really wants you to know that you do have the power to do that. Like it's okay. Like you don't have to get a permission from anyone. Um, you don't have to be validated by anyone for those of you who are struggling with that at this time. Um, you know, and it is, you know, taking a leap of faith, but like it's betting on you, right? It's kind of betting on your ability to be very prosperous. Maybe some of you are comfortable being, you know, kind of out of the box, being unique, but you don't really believe that it's going to be profitable, right? Like you think differently, you're okay being like, you know, dressing differently and having different ideas and different points of view on things. But in terms of your career, maybe you're thinking that those energies just really wouldn't play out well for you. And like I said, that's actually you know understandable because of that saturnian energy that's just naturally around the midhaven is that saturn really wants you to follow rules and a structure and you know be practical and things like that um saturn is actually exalted in the sign of aquarius it's the traditional ruler of aquarius actually so um it makes perfect sense that maybe some of you are like kind of juggling between like taking on a different approach in something or just 
starting up a new business that's different, that's really, um, you know, like esoteric, but it's also eccentric. You know, it's not kind of like what everyone else is doing on social media. I'm getting that too. Like, you know, there's kind of like a, a, a common brand of like, certain kinds of people like maybe you are going to be outside of that and it's going to require a leap of faith and it's going to require you to really step in and brand yourself as someone unique as someone that's kind of just different in the industry that you're in so that's what i'm getting this is beautiful so far i think that big things are on the horizon um aquarius is ruling the year 2021 so this is an Aquarius year um, with, you know, big Saturn and Jupiter in the sign. Back in February, we had the stellium energy in Aquarius. Pluto is moving his way towards Aquarius. He's still in Capricorn, but he will be in Aquarius, I believe, in 2022. Not sure on the exact date, but because I know he just went retrograde, but he should be there soon. So I'm getting our um, astrology cards now, Aquarius. These are planet cards, house cards, and zodiac cards. First one that flipped is the seventh house. This has actually come out quite a few times in these readings. The house of Libra, your fellow air sign, one of your fellow air signs. So that's long-term partnerships and, um, yeah, long-term partnerships and relationships, romantic business or family. Now, because it's coming out over responsibility, that could mean for me just intuitively and obviously that you have a responsibility to your family or to your relationships, right? So this is a career reading. So you're thinking, um, you know, whatever you make, whatever you earn, like you're responsible for seeing that to your family or that your close loved ones are supported. Um, your children, if you have any, all right. Planet card, ooh, Jupiter. I think he came out in, I think it was, might've been the Capricorn reading, which is right before you. Um, Jupiter. Jupiter is currently placed in Aquarius. I think he's retrograde in Aquarius and it's coming out with leap of faith. And look what this person's doing. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up, right? So, but Jupiter is the great benefic. Um, he's bringing gifts and expansion, luck. And you know, if he's cross, if he's in Aquarius, he's crossing over your midhaven, or has crossed over your midhaven. Um, Scorpio. Um, Zodiac card. This card of Scorpio. Uh, water sign but the qualities of scorpio are actually pretty similar to aquarius believe it or not i mean scorpio rules the eighth house and is um ruled by pluto but scorpio is very comfortable with being out of the box right it's shadowy it's been very investigative it's okay kind of going it alone which is very much aquarian energy as well i mean aquarius is about the collective but it's a very detached energy as well which kind of is like scorpio um and this is coming out with branding your unique snowflake. Yeah, and as I'm saying, like standing out and being a little unique, being a bit of an oddball, that is like definitely branding, right? You could brand yourself as that, but maybe that's where the, the leap of faith needs to come in. Maybe that's where you're not sure um, whether or not you'd be successful or received well with that. So let's go to your tarot now, Aquarius. I'm using the eighth house tarot decks. These are actually astrology cards as well, but they're, they're tarot. But they just include the planetary placements. Um, let's get a few cards for each pile. I'm gonna get a nice shuffle in. First card, Eight of Water, Saturn and Scorpio. Yeah, so this Eight of Water is Eight of Cups. It's moving away from things that are not emotionally fulfilling towards something that is. Um, this could be actually moving away from long-term relationships could be business oriented could be even like family members um, maybe people that don't support you or people that are just like naysayers you know their their, their vibration their energy kind of dampens yours um, maybe not intentionally but it just does and so you're really trying to move away from that and find your soul tribe um, find people and situations and experiences that are really going to nourish your soul nourish your purpose whatever it is you want to that you want to, excuse me, that you want to um, be a part of in this human experience and really pushing you forward too, things that are going to push you forward, okay? And with this, you know, Eight of Cups coming out with responsibility in Seventh House, again, I just think it's like, you know, sort of saying like, you know, you are responsible for yourself and your well-being and your happiness. And that may sometimes conflict or diverge a little bit from already established relationships. 
Next card that flipped is Page of Fire, which is Page of Wands. Page of Wands is like new insight, right? It's like this light bulb and it's beautifully lit up um, with the color orange and there's a book here. So it's you like studying, finding new knowledge, um, getting in on like seminars, workshops, um, watching programs like Gaia, like or you know, networks that have different programs for your knowledge or just, you know, doing your own like intelligent um, like research, you know, independent and intelligent research, reading books that resonate with you, even conversations too. You know, you could be having conversations since seventh house is here. You could just be taking up conversations with people that, you know, it's going to help you build relationships and help you like expand your consciousness, expand your viewpoint, your perspective. It's beautiful energy. Um, yeah, now we have Saturn here, the world. Aquarius is one of the signs that's in the world card. These are all the fixed signs. So yourself, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus, and Leo. But the world card is about ending. So what I was saying about uh, moving away from people that do not support you, that have just different energies, low vibrational energies, or just different, right? The Eight of Cups energy is really kind of confirming what I said here with the Saturn card. It's endings, right? But it's like natural endings. It's something just that just naturally is coming to an end. Um, it's ran its course. Um, everything that me had needed to be learned, that needed to be learned, excuse me, has been learned. Um, and the experience is now just shifting. Um, cycles are ending. And I have been saying that quite a bit in different readings, various readings that this year, 2021, it's a five year. So that's just drastic change. Um, and with the big planets transiting, getting ready to go through Aquarius, Pluto in particular, you know, it's transformation. Um, Saturn is lessons, karmic lessons. He's in Aquarius. Jupiter is expansion, right? But it's expansion based on the work that you've already been doing. So if you've been looking to move away or make changes and here comes Jupiter, he's really going to help you facilitate that and, you know, bring that into fruition. So it's just, like I said, natural endings coming into play here. Relationships ending or fading away. Um, nothing negative, like I'm not getting any like toxic energy. It's just like a difference, right? Like a, just like kind of a divergence is what I'm getting. Okay. Um, Ace of air. This is your energy, which is like Ace of swords. So new kind of piggybacking off of the page of air here. Um, new cycle. Yeah, actually, it's piggybacking off of what I just said with this first row with uh, endings naturally coming into play here, cycles ending. But with that, a new beginning takes place. And that's what aces are. They're new cycles, new beginnings. And an ace of air, ace of swords, it's like a new beginning in terms of how you see yourself, how you think, how you strategize, even how you communicate. Since swords energy can be how you verbalize your truth, how you're able to um, stay within integrity in terms of how you communicate with others. The interesting thing with this first pile here, this first row, is that this um, angels in your biz oracle is it's an 11. The 11 is um, the justice card in the tarot. The justice card is Libra. Libra rules the seventh house. So that so Libra could be very significant to you. But I'm also just getting the energies of balance, remaining like fair and true, um, keeping clarity as like at the root or at the, the core of your foundation, making sure that you know, all parties involved always know what's going on, whether that is your, your family or your new business, you know, again, just people that are close to you so that you can move forward in your professional life. Remember, Midhaven is also your reputation, too. So this doesn't have to be exactly like a job change or a title change. It's just like maintaining like the reputation you've built or that you are building, um, being that person of honor, being a trustworthy individual, making sure that whoever you speak with, like there, there's never like any loose ends right like things are kind of secure i'm getting that energy and with jupiter here it's with this leap of faith taking a leap of faith with starting something new right not really letting experiences from the past really you know tie you down bog you down oh look here you are the star aquarius energy coming out with the Jupiter and leap of faith. So the star is hopeful. It's also dreams coming true. It's wish fulfillment. It's healing after anything traumatic or, you know, destabilizing. Um, I think that this is just really playing into source, really wanting you to take that step that maybe you have been uncertain about, um, thinking that it's not going to pan out well professionally. I think that this is one of those times where it's like build the plane as you're flying it kind of energy. Um, 
figure it out as you go kind of way. And the star card really helps that Jupiter that facilitates that as well. And as I mentioned before, Jupiter is currently placed in the sign of Aquarius. So this right here, I mean, you have air energy, Aquarius is air energy. I was mentioning Libra, that's an air sign. So, you know, and remember air is more, it's flexible energy. You know, it's not as rigid as the previous Capricorn energy that we've had before the big transits of Saturn and Jupiter. Um, now we have Page of Fire, Page of Wands. This is like creativity. This is embarking on something that's passionate. So getting back to what I said about, um, you know, you being comfortable standing out, being eccentric, uh, being an oddball. Um, this is now taking that and really igniting a part of yourself where you are masterful, where you have like honed a craft. I mean, no, I know pages are typically young or useful energy, but this is what I'm getting is that it's something that you've been doing since you were young or it's like evolved over a period of time, right? Cause I'm getting this heart here is making me think of like, this is something that has been close to your heart for a long time. And now you really want to make it something profitable or share it with others, maybe teach others um, your method or your um, just anything. Like even if it's coaching, like helping others with your guidance, you know? Um, but it is, again, requiring a leap of faith. Oh, look, Jupiter, Wheel of Fortune. This is a beautiful reading, you guys. Wheel of Fortune is a 10 card. It's coming out here with Branding and Scorpio. So Scorpionic energy, again, deep transformation, um, death, rebirth, endings. Um, it's also eighth house energy for Scorpio is sensuality, but also other people's money. So like taxes, um, investments, uh, any type of funding from the government. Um, I think that maybe this could help you brand yourself somehow. Like if there's like any type of um, like scholarships or um, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, when, when you get, um, I can't think, I'm sorry guys, I'm blanking, but like it's scholarships and then there's something else you can get to help fund your, um, bit your business or like an endeavor. So if it's like education related, you can like get, um, money to help you start a new program or to do your research, um, to help you get like participants. If you're doing like a study, like a consumer based study, or just, you know, something where you need to like collect a lot of data. There are, um, yeah, basically funds available somehow. I mean, I don't want to get into the particulars and this is a general reading anyway. So what I'm saying is that with this Jupiter card, with this Wheel of Fortune, I'm getting that there could be assistance available to you um, to help you brand yourself, right? Even if it's like a contest you enter into and you win and, you know, one of the prizes is like, you know, maybe you get like a free website rebranding session or, you know what I mean? Like you get like your land is, your landing page is built out, something like that. It's just the vibe I'm getting. Like assistance coming through with helping you brand, you know, but it would be things that you would have to pay for is what I'm saying because that eighth house energy is other people's money, okay? So let's get a few more cards. A lot flipped out, that was too many though. It was like a big stack of them that flipped. Um, Neptune, this is Piscean energy. The hanged one, which is suspension, but in this reading, I'm getting that it's more so patience and it's also opening up to receive those divine downloads. So in the traditional tarot, the person that's suspended upside down, there's like a beam of light around their head, their heart, not their heart, their, um, their uh, crown chakra, right? So that really represents source, giving them insight or divine downloads. It could be coming through dreams for you. It could be come, coming through synchronicities, seeing repeated numbers, or maybe someone says something and it just triggers like a thought pattern. Um, you know, even if it's something that wasn't said directly to you, it just kind of gets you thinking about something else, you know what I mean? And that's just synchronistic, right? It's more just, you know, you might think it's random, but I think sometimes that's how source delivers information to us. That's how it gets to us here in the 3D into our consciousness. So with this Neptune card, this hangman card, I think it's just source coming through to say like, be patient with yourself and allow the signs to show up for you. Um, it kind of connects with the um, leap of faith card and the Jupiter card as well. 
I mean, you have Jupiter twice, the Jupiter uh, astrology card and Jupiter, the tarot card with the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune really turns on its own. It turns in in response to your own vibration, to your activity, to your intentions. So when you take a leap of faith, when you believe in yourself, when you remain true to yourself, integrity, honor, that wheel is going to start to turn the opportunities and the experiences, the relationships are going to come in um, as it you know relates to that vibrational level that you're on. What do we have now? Ooh, Hermit card, Virgo. So healing, but this is just going inward, being introspective, a little bit of what I was channeling with the Hangman card. Look, you have three major arcanas in this last row. The Wheel of Fortune, the Hanged Man, and now you have the Hermit card, Virgo energy. So... You know, again, it's just really getting still and trusting. I think this is what maybe is going to preface that leap of faith is getting still um, journaling out. We have a full moon coming up in just a few days. I'm recording this on the 21st of April. So full moon in Scorpio, actually crazy. You have the Scorpio card here. So um, full moons are always about releasing. Um, it's about, you know, it's setting intentions as well, but it's about releasing what is in the way of you um really bringing in whatever you want with your intentions, any type of traumas, baggage, um, you know, blo blockages, just needing clarity. And Scorpio, again, is a shadowy energy. It is really going deep to the root of things, um, doing any kind of shadow work, releasing, you know, um, low vibrational energies that you have found yourself in. Of course, we're all human beings. We're never, you know, just all a bed of roses, but really checking those demeaning thought patterns maybe that were you know programmed into your subconscious when you were very young and you know looking at that um looking into see how that maybe has prevented you from showing up with clarity showing up with truth and integrity and you know sources really want you to maintain that and get to that point and from that point is where you can be launched into whatever it is that you want to be doing um, even if it is just maintaining your integrity or correcting an issue that maybe have, has hurt your integrity or i'm sorry yeah integrity but your reputation you know something that could have happened between you and a close partner um, with your business with your family with your friendships because you have the seventh house here you have the 11 card here so i'm just getting a few different scenarios actually for you um uh, aquarius that you know that just because something didn't work out in the past or maybe you um, didn't act in your highest good doesn't mean that things won't work out in the future. Doesn't mean that you can't get back to a place of passion and, you know, really do what you know how to do really well. Um, this is like giving yourself a second shot, you know, or just a shot. That's what I'm getting with this. And, you know, hermit energy in the traditional tarot, the hermit, he's a cloaked man walking with a lantern. And in that lantern, that light is the star card. And you have the star card here. So there's just a lot of even synchronicity in this reading, I would say. So that's what I have for you. Let's go ahead and wrap up with a few angel answers. Aquarius. Look for a sign. Didn't I say that when the hangman came out? Yeah, because there are going to be things coming through. It's up to you. It's always up to us, but whatever's coming through is up to us, is up to you. And improving health. Interesting. Improving health. Now you do have the Virgo card here. Virgo rules the sixth house, the house of wellness and health and day-to-day -day activities. So it could be just, you know, getting back to that point as well, bringing balance back through um, your day-to-day -day activities. Okay, Aquarius, that's what I have for you. Hope that this resonates. Like the video if it does. Subscribe to the channel if this is your kind of thing. I've linked my website below. You can go there to schedule a reading or just check out other information. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next reading and be sure to thrive. Bye.